We're a little over a week away from the NFL draft. The Jaguars have the 17th overall pick right now. We've got 1010 XL's Frank Frangi here in the building. Let's talk a little bit about what the Jaguars could do in the first round. So we know they have 17, yeah. and maybe we've talked a little bit about what they could do on the clock at 17. But what if they move out of that 17th spot? Uh, would you trade up? Would you trade back? Would you would you go get a guy, or would you try and stack some picks in what a lot of people think is a really good draft? I, it's boring. It's a boring answer, but I think they're going to stay at 17. I, I don't think this is the year you change. If there's some, if you could, if you were picking ninth or 10th or 11th, and you could go get Marvin Harrison without uh, costing you too much equity, I think then maybe you do that. But I don't think that's, we're in year 17. I don't think you can go high enough to get one of the elite players. And I don't think you want to back out of there because I think you, you have some needs, cornerback and receiver, maybe an edge, maybe an offensive lineman. So I think the way the whole paradigm plays this year, you stay right where you are. I don't see them going up or back. I really don't. Trading up would cost you some resources, and the Jaguars do have some needs. You mentioned cornerback and receiver. Uh, I know a lot of people have kind of red-marked those as got to get one of them in the first round. What if the board falls and uh, the best player on your board yeah. isn't at one of those positions? I think they're in a spot. You always hear value versus need, Jamal. Everybody says it's value over need. I don't know if I always believe that. I think more teams draft for need than they admit. But in this instance, I think the Jaguars really can take the best player. I think it is a value deal. The only position where I'm relatively convinced that the guy they take at 17 would be a starter is cornerback. I'm not convinced he would be a starter at wide receiver because I like their, their room. It could be, but I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced an edge. An edge wouldn't start. Uh, he'd play a lot. Uh, an offensive lineman wouldn't start. The only spot where I'm pretty convinced that 17 overall will start is corner, outside corner, which is why I think there's a pretty good chance that's what they do. But I agree with what you said a minute ago. I think value over need really fits the Jaguars this year. Is there a spot where you just hate the pick? I mean, I know some people, like I've mentioned, offensive line as being a need just because you like Trevor Lawrence. They wear those white jerseys. I'd like to see Trevor's yeah, clean after yeah. more games than, uh, than maybe we've seen in the past. But you mentioned it. A lot of these guys, you pick them at 17, people expect them to start. Yeah. Some of these positions, there's just not that opportunity. They'd be depth unless injury. Yeah, and now listen, you play a lot of guys. Yeah. If you get another receiver, you play more than three receivers. If you get uh, a pass rusher, the defensive line is the most rotated position in football, so you're going to play a lot of guys. So whoever comes in at 17 is going to play a lot of football for the Jags, don't get me wrong. But as far as the starter that you need, I don't think there's a lot of holes. I don't think this is a team with a lot of holes on its front line. Everybody needs more depth. But as far as your first 22, 24 guys, I don't think it's a team with a lot of holes. I do sense that outside corner is one area that everybody believes is, is an area they could improve right out of the gate. Here's one thing that I, that I want to ask you. Uh, when the Jaguars hired Mike Caldwell, Doug Peterson had just come in, but you saw that draft. They went there and they got a lot of guys from Mike Caldwell in that draft, young players yeah. that fit his system. Do you think they're going to go that route again? Do you think it's important for them to get guys for Ryan Nielsen this go-round? I think they've already done it. I, I think they we saw that in free agency yeah. a little bit. There's certainly, you want to get, when you hire a new coach, you obviously have to hire the players that he, that he will feel most comfortable coaching, whether that's through the draft, whether that's through free agency. But you, you hit on a good point, Jamal. This draft isn't just about 17 overall. It's about the entirety of the draft. I think you're going to see some defense. I think you're going to see an edge at some point. I think you're going to see an offensive lineman at some point. We know you're going to see at least one, maybe two cornerbacks. You're probably going to see a receiver. Again, this is a team that's close. Fill in some gaps, develop a little depth, and that means a bunch of guys. And so, I, so don't focus just on what happens at 17. That's the sexy pick. But what happens throughout the course of the draft, I think they've got to make their team better at edge, at corner, at receiver, at the offensive line, and some depth there. I think maybe two cornerbacks, as a matter of fact. So they've got some needs, no question. It is a three-day process, yeah. and you need to win on all three days. I mean, you don't have to look farther than last year. Antonio Johnson was a day three pick, and now he's penciled in as a starter for this team. I'm not going to ask Frank right now who he thinks is a pick at 17 as well. I'll save that for next week, so I'll give you a little bit of time. But give me a position. What position do you think the Jaguars will take in the first Yeah, round? I'm not locked in into it because of what I said earlier, right. value over need. But if you pick a position, it's hard not to say cornerback. Cornerback is the one spot where a guy comes in and starts right away. So if I had to pick a position, I'd be surprised if it's not corner. We'll see if the board shakes out just right. We're a little over a week away from the draft. We'll have coverage starting at 7 o'clock here on Draft Day on Channel 4. Make sure you tune in for that. Frank, thanks for being here. That'll do it for sports.